and how Kundalini awakening is, is looked at um, from our point of view. Um, I think, I, well, okay, there's the word Kundalini awakening can itself kind of be confusing because um, it can refer to the, the, the sudden opening movement of the Kundalini or it could be associated with spiritual awakening where people associate the Kundalini with that. Um, to me, the Kundalini movement doesn't actually create awakening. Um, it creates altered states that, um, from an egoic point of view, can be thought of as awakening. Like the first time I went into full samadhi, I thought, wow, this is it. Got there, you know, and um, fell out, you know. You know, and, um, and it was working with Papaji's books that, you know, had put me into it. I thought, well, I, you know, I'll just get back in. That wasn't so easy. Finally had another one, fell back out. Then I was depressed because I, I didn't know how to stay there, and I thought that was it, right? And I actually traveled to India to find Papaji to ask him that. I was like, well, how do I stay there? And he said, well, where do you think you, go? you went? I said, I went into perfect freedom. He said, for every going, there's a return. And I didn't. I didn't get it at the time. But what he was saying is that awakening isn't a going somewhere. It's not this big blow up, shh, you know. It's actually the opposite, you know. It's something disappears and it just becomes, you know, space, so to speak. Um, so, um, so the Kundalini itself, um, and those experiences are very good. They, they facilitate, you know, people wanting more. I wanted more, you know, so it's a, it's a nice carrot to pull people down the path as long as at some point they realize that's not it, right? Because um, otherwise it just becomes a quest for bigger, better, more, you know, highs out of that. It's a high, you know, the ego goes into an expanded state. Um, but the Kundalini itself is a physical, is a dense physical energy that comes up the spine and nourishes the whole system, feeds the chakras, feeds the cells, um, and, um, um, and it gets blocked. We have a class actually for clearing the Kundalini um, because um, having it clear, um, we don't do this, you know, blow up thing. You know, we actually just clear it, we clean it so that the energy naturally rises and just feeds everything. It just makes the system stronger. So we're looking at the Kundalini for the, for the sake of having it create a stronger system. We're not using it to create um, spiritual effects, right? Um, now, um, all that said, there's something called the Nadi system, which is the subtle nervous system. And the Nadi system um, is everywhere, and there's a lot of, obviously, around your spine, there's going to be a lot of complex Nadi stuff there. Um, in the spiritual literature, to me, when people talk about using the Kundalini to awaken, to me, what they're actually talking about is when the Kundalini is flowing freely, and there's a harmony, it's clear enough, and there's a harmony that arises between the two sides, suddenly there is this naughty activation. Um, so that whole, you know, picture you see, to me that's actually a picture of what's happening in the naughty system in the spine when the kundalini is in a certain place. And the naughty system could be a bridge for the divine. Right? It's a subtle system that the divine can bridge through. So it's more through that naughty system that people are using it to actually do spiritual work where the Kundalini, the only thing it can do in itself is just to blast people out of their crown chakra, um, which is, again, a great high, but, you know, usually becomes an For yogis in particular, it can become a real addiction and a real distraction. And, you know, a lot of yogis get hooked there. You know, they get hooked by their own, you know, samadhi, you know, chasing, chasing the samadhi dream. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, let's say, um, take a simple case. Let's say you go into a cave. Okay. Most caves, most big caves, you'll find cave spirits. They're not really beings, they're expressions of Gaia, but they have a, a pseudo life form. You can, you know, you have that kind of heaviness you sometimes feel in a cave, that's often a cave spirit. So they get disturbed by human beings being there. And because um, um, human beings, you know, anything we do and say, it leaves a vibration in the astral, leaves an imprint. And, and they can't clear that, it's, it's too dense. So, like, at, at basic level, you could you could clear that that leftover stuff out of the cave, and you could feel that spirit kind of become you know, calmer. On a bigger level, um, in the second level class, we learn to be able to 
um, work with um, something we call Merlin's Healing Grid, which you can use to actually clear stuff out of towns, out of cities. Um, for instance, <clears throat> when I was looking at moving to Colorado, I visited this one town um, um, up in the north, and it felt like there was like a sheet of plastic over the over nature, and it was all this consciousness of Midwestern people coming to um, to live there and having the consciousness of nothing should change, right? And it created this this like rigid film over the earth there, so it felt really weird walking there. It was like it was like I wasn't connected to anything, <clears throat> so I I used Merlin's healing grid. Um, only took a few minutes, and suddenly all of that was gone. And you could feel, you could feel nature again. And so, um, uh, at higher level classes, there are there are these divine funnels that we can bring in um, that help to bring that kind of energy into spaces and um, divine doors. And you know, a lot of our vortex students do earthworks like that, going around clearing up places. We've done stuff in London, um, and um, you know, students are still doing that kind of stuff in London. Um, so um, absolutely, <clears throat> and you can use it to heal um, individual, you know, things in nature, or um, um, you know, or or large large areas like that. Um, twice a year we meet <clears throat> to do what I call an Earth Shift, and where um, the group is actually focused on doing some kind of healing on a on a global level, whether that's for um, for some kind of issue or um, it can be a whole range of things, and so you know we intentionally meet as a group to actually do, you know, global healings a couple of times a year. But students are doing the other the other stuff, you know, all year round, according to how they get, you know, uh, what they get drawn to do. <clears throat>